This is Jeremiah. Let's get going. We're at 155, somewhere around there. We're at about 155 videos, and uh, that's a lot of videos. Uh, but let's not talk too much about administrative and behind-the-scenes stuff. Let's get more to the lesson here. I, I have a tendency to want to share a lot with you pertaining to these... Uh, Uh, situations here. Now, when, and what I mean by that is we, we, we have a lot going on here and I, I try my best to, to format everything to, to be the least confusing as possible. A lot of people are going to leave this ministry because they just want to hear you give a message and then let you go. I don't do that here very much. What we do here is, and this is New Covenant and I'm Jeremiah, the Bible teacher. What we do here is greet you in the only name given amongst men. That's category 52. There's only one name given amongst men by which you must be saved. And the thing is, is that learning to, learning to own the ability to move around is basically what we're doing here. is we're learning how to dance around and move around your Bible and know where we are, and, know, and for you to know where you are, so that uh, you can think about a category pretty much all the time. You don't have to read your Bible in terms of categories. You don't have to do that. I'm, I'm, I'm using that format here, and I like it. That's, that's what I'm doing. You know, I, I like this format, and I'm going to continue with it. And I think that all of you are going to be beneficial beneficiaries uh, to this. The covenant is a new covenant. It is a verbal agreement between God, Father God, the Lord God of heaven and earth, and us, the children of Adam. And it is, it is a verbal agreement, essentially, to apply ourselves to pleasing God. Whereas before... We had no priorities in our lives to do that. And I'm here to help you to, to have a lot of concepts in your mind so that when you read your Bible, you basically know where you are. I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the, for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. So when you read your Bible and, and we read together, as this ministry grows, you're going, to, you're going to think about things on your own as opposed to being uh, led and reminded all the time of what's going on. Okay? That's, that's like one of the main goals here now. And you've made an agreement to do that. And that agreement you are fulfilling. To fulfill the royal law is to do quite a few things. And that's number three in this ministry, the trifecta. To love the Lord your God is to put time aside for study and let, don't let anyone or anything get in the way. I mean, barring some emergency or whatever, or, you know, circumstances beyond your control, you need to have a steady Bible study uh, flow going. And, and my flow here is constant. And I'm very happy with that situation. I'm very happy that we have uh, we have 52 that we're getting, we're we're, we're going to start really pushing. Uh, I don't even have my previous channel up there over here right now. So what we're going to do today is we're going to just look at uh, the 17 that I have, and we're going to add some more later. Not not now, but we will do some reading. Now, let's do some reading as we, as we get used to going through your Bible. Now, what's the first lesson that we have here in 21? Well, we have a lot. We have prophecy, and that's 16. We have science, that's 15. So you're getting prophecy and science here, and, and you're also, of course, with no more C in 21.1, you're getting future science. You're getting future uh, ge geography. And that's the first thing that should come to your mind. And then when you go to the second verse, 
And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. So there you go. It's all ready for you. And it's coming down. And we have more science here. Coming down. When the Bible says down, it means down. It's never sideways. It, it, see, the Bible is something that... It's, it's something that people, people try to, or they unwittingly... They, they contradict it, and a lot of people will do that. And it doesn't mean it, that something is wrong, per se. It's just, a, it's very common for people not to pay attention to simple grammar. And here we have coming down, coming down from, in, in my science lesson, for those of you who are interested, coming down means coming down, always. You're, you're never sideways. There's never upside down. Down means down all the time. That's why the Bible always refers to down and up and ascension in a concrete manner, and it never deviates from that. Only the reader deviates. The text is consistent and quite clear. That's one reason why I've moved science up to a more prominent uh, situation. I did have science uh, further on down the line, but not anymore. I'm going to start teaching science right in the middle of everything because people need to know true science. Now let's continue. So we also see creativity here and we see a lot of intelligence because not, not only do we see power but we see intelligence and we see creative design and we see it at a degree which is phenomenal it, it, it is it is a there's a degree of tech technological wonder here that's just mind-blowing and the scale here is ginormous. It's enormous. It, it's, it's big. Uh, the city that's coming down is about half the size of the United States, maybe one-third of the size of the United States, about as big as Australia. It's, it's a big city. And we're going to spend a lot of time talking about this city. I'm going to assemble a video for you, and I will call it probably the city walls or the gyms or something so that you can look at some images that, that, that give you some sort of idea as to where you're going. Now you don't have to get into, uh, take time to look at the new city. You, you can obviously wait until you get there, uh, but I'm going to give you a preview and, you know, a trailer as they say here in America, but, I, but I'm not going to go into it for, for a long period of time. It's not going to be extended. It is, I'm only going to put about five videos up there pertaining to Jerusalem and the wall, which is number seven. See, number seven is what we're on right now. And seven is basically heaven, and it's basically Revelation 21, 22. But when we get to 8 through 17, 19, and 20, what we're going to talk about, I'm going to share with you, is the components the experiences that you're going to encounter, okay? You're going to encounter these experiences and we're going through them at a very slow pedestrian pace and I want to do, I want I'm, this by design and I want to have you enjoy being, you know, it's, it's like the Bible says, he leadeth me in paths of righteousness. What I'm doing is I'm leading you into paths of correct, uh, paths of righteousness, which is the same thing. But I just want to add that that path is leaning towards beauty this year and a lot of things that you're going to enjoy. 
In other words, the, the path of righteousness is also to teach what we call negativity, you know, such as the, the, the beast and all this, which is on, very famous online right now. It's quite popular and, and very prolific. But for me, I find myself focusing on the beauty of what you're going to enjoy as the main idea here in this ministry, in New Covenant, okay? Now, let, let's get going. Now, we have science here, we have beauty, we have, uh, uh, and let's get, let's get more into what's in heaven, okay? And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men. And he will dwell with them, and he shall, and they shall, pardon me, shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. So, so what's happening here is another very important part of beauty and heaven is that we're, we're, we're really getting into seven here, and we're, we're going to start breaking down some of the other things here uh, that are a part of beauty or a part of heaven, okay? And this, of course, is the final feast of the Hebrews. What's happening right now is we have the final segment of time in the, 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 the festivals and the prophecies pertaining to what's going to happen to God's people. Just like he said, they, they will be my people. So now it's, now's the time for the Feast of Tabernacles, and that means that God is going to tabernacle with you. Instead of him being way up there, about 24,000 miles, right on top of your head above Polaris, he, he's going to be nearby. And, and that's why we have, of course, the morning star, which is 13 on our beauty list. Okay? Now I want to change subjects for a minute and remind you of something. We're going to enumerate everything here. I'm going to enumerate just about everything. In other words, but I'm, I'm not going to test you or anything. It's just that we, we have, for example, but we won't have large uh, denominations. We, 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 won't, we, we won't have uh, a large volume. I, I have 4.1, uh, which is grace. 4.2 is mercy. 4.3 is grace. Mercy is peace is 4.3. And 4.4 is rest. However, I'm not necessarily going to be enumerating them. It's just that we're going to have them available. Okay? Verse 5. Verse 4. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, Neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. To say this is ginormous is an understatement. This is absolutely beautiful stuff here. This is, this is where it gets good, and this is where I park here quite a bit. As this ministry unfolds, I will park on this for, for a, the lion's share of this ministry, because... I think that it's time for people who are Christians to start spending more time, and uh, and, and we're going to do that. I mean, we're doing it right now. I just went through this chapter. I'm going through it again. I'm going to go through it again, probably next year, again. These two chapters are the apex of Christianity. If you combine John 14 with this, and 15, where Jesus tells you he loves you over and over again, and you combine this, you've got yourself a done deal. In terms of setting up some sort of uh, top-tier, uh, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? I keep saying you know. It, 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 this is where everything comes from. This is where you're going permanently. To, to talk about faith all the time or, or, um, or uh, the war, uh, we just mentioned that in Romans between the, 
the spirit in the flesh and and to talk about uh, you know uh, all the wars and and Sennacherib and and Josiah you know and, you know and people cry and stories and, and Jonah doesn't want to go preach and you know these are all very important critical things to teach on and, and I'm not going to stop doing that I'm just sharing with you that it's a wonderful time in this ministry whereby that we're basically done with that and that's going to be supplemental. We're going to continue to talk about beauty and that's one, that's one reason why I'm putting a lot of very high definition pictures up in my videos. Okay? Because a lot of high definition pictures uh, of, of beauty, of earth, and, and now we're starting to add more about heaven and some, you know, some artists giving their renderings their composites on what they think heaven looks like and without getting too wild with that and, and enjoying this. This is this is uh, something that we have the opportunity to delve into and I'm going to spend a lot of time on this. Now, there's going to be at least five videos on gems alone and wa the walls and gems and things like that. I already have quite a, uh, a, quite a bit a, a lot of images already. I'm going to probably add some more. We're going to organize them, and, and it's just going to be gems so that you can sit back and study and learn what you're going to, the colors you're going to see throughout eternity, because it, which, which is, goes back to why I chose beauty this year. It's because heaven is very beautiful. See, this is what's significant, is that I'm not going to spend all my time on beauty. What I'm saying is, is that, is that it, it, there's nothing wrong with you thinking about where you're going and the beauty you're going to experience. Obviously, I'm saying that most churches have spent very little time talking about this. I've never went to a church, I've been to quite a few, where they showed slideshows or talked about gyms and gave you some sort of pamphlet on, on what, what the walls of Jerusalem are going to look like and the city of gold. And, and, and in other words, we're not here to push a lot of pictures. That's not the point. Otherwise, God would have put pictures in the Bible. I just think that now that we have the, the Internet and we have computers and, and high-definition screens, that we may as well take advantage of them. And it's also a wonderful evangelical tool because you're showing people in high definition what you're going to get when you serve the Lord and what you're going to miss if you don't serve the Lord. Uh, you know, we, we're, 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 we're becoming all things to save people, kind of. You know, we're, you know, we're, we're be, and, and I think that this is very, very, very important. And now we're talking about how beautiful it's going to be in terms of no one is going to cry or be sad ever again. Now, I've, I've only went over this two times in the past couple of months. I'm not going to go over this every day. It's just that to, to really bring this point home is something that I'm going to do over and over again. Of course, I, I have not given the, the no weeping uh, a number, uh, but we will probably make laughing uh, a number here under under beauty because laughing is what the master said. You're going to do a lot of. You're going to do a lot of laughing. I have a video up video up called Laughing Again that talks about Christians laughing in heaven because the master said. You're going to laugh. Now, all the ministries that I've been involved with, none of them talked about you going to heaven and doing a lot of laughing, which means that ministry was not necessarily doing their job. That's my point. There's no crying, laughing, uh, laughing. It should be a big part of any Bible teaching ministry because it's where you're going and it's good. But why not talk about it? So I'm going to keep talking about laughing. I have not given I have not given laughing a number yet, but I I, I think I'm going to make that uh, 20 or 21 or something here, so that when we talk about it, we're going to talk about laughing.
i also i'm also going to talk about my video that i call laughing again it's available for you online laughing is i'm not talking about hysterical crazy laughing i'm talking about a sound mind enjoying laughing there's nothing wrong with that So I'm very excited about going through all of these beautiful things that, that, that are basically going to be the cornerstone of this ministry uh, for this year. And next year, it's going to be one of the main pivotal areas. I'm going to use this as a main resource. Obviously, we're going to use number four quite a bit, which is grace. Grace is a very big part in mercy and peace and rest. Shalom. We're going to spend a lot of time on this. I'm going to give you some Hebrew, probably in Greek, and we're going to spend a lot of time on number four, which is you're saved by grace, and we're going to definitely spend a lot of time on number four, big time. Okay? We're not leaving, you know, the big hitters alone. You know, we're not, we're not letting the big hitters go here. I just gave a lesson on deity, explaining uh, a little more as to the, the Trinity and so forth. And so we're, we're, we're bouncing around here. I haven't gotten to 29, which is, which is the high priest. Jesus Christ is the high priest in the order of Melchizedek to forever make intercession for you. And he is the high priest of your confession. You're supposed to speak your business basically with him. Not with a man wearing all black, Worshipping a woman flying across the room. That's called uh, that's called danger zone. Now We're gonna like I said, I'm gonna start getting into all this. Okay Right now. I'm just want to get into to peace. I mean to pardon me to beauty and we're going to continue to get into Revelation 21 Now let's go back over beauty one more time and I, this will be the last time I go through um, The entire list uh, as, as far as my plans go because I plan everything far in advance usually I, I basically know what I'm going to do for the rest of the year I know what I'm going to do at the beginning of the year here on these videos and and I'm very happy with the way things are going we have if and goodwill coming up which is very very important for number six okay so let's get back to to beauty again now You know that the introduction to this whole uh, category number seven playlist is capacity and ability. That's the whole introduction. There's no, there's nowhere to go without capacity. Forget it. You, you know, if you don't have eyes, you can't see. So, so this is where the whole concept of beauty and enjoying God's creation and enjoying uh, we, we branched it out into seven point four which is inner beauty. We looked at the inner beauty of Jesus Christ and, and how he's, he's a judge, he's a fair judge, and he's, uh, he's very, very, very caring because you can actually go downstairs for being mean to people, and we talked about that. Uh, that's Matthew chapter 5, quite clear in the middle of the chapter. So we, we're talking about the inner beauty of God, his character, and the inner beauty of you being transformed and changed, which we haven't gotten that much into in Isaiah maybe, so we have a little bit more to go, but we're, we're basically done because I'm going to go into some poetry and some garden stuff and a garden and, and, and we're going to stop right there because I, I don't have any more time for beauty in terms of developing any, any, any more, such as in my science lessons, we talk about how beautiful stars are and what stars actually are because some of you may not know what stars are. Somebody may have told you, given you some bad information, and so forth. Which will help you understand why stars are so beautiful, and that they're actually very close to you. God does not reveal truth to people who are not going to prioritize Him. He won't give them the truth. That's why most Americans don't know the truth. Because there's been a falling away from God. There's been a, there's been a worship for 
for for material things and so forth and so god has backed off of informing humans americans who are children of adam and he's backed off of giving them the truth and he's allowed things that are not true to be spoken to them because getting the truth is a privilege and that privilege comes from you loving the son jesus christ that's where you start getting information in the truth If you don't want to prioritize love and care and truth and kindness, you won't know anything. You may know some data or information about how a tree grows or, or, or how volcanoes are formed uh, in, in, in five days or something like that. You, you may know how to build a bridge, but you will not know the wisdom we're talking about right here. That's why there are so few people who come to my channel. Because God's not drawing them. We have that wonderful song, Cause me to come to thy river, O Lord. Cause me to come to thy river. In other words, draw me to your river of love and truth. Well, he's not going to draw you there if you're not a nice person. You'll, you'll, never, you'll never know an intellect. You'll never know wisdom. Say goodbye to it. You'll never know it. So in America, or people around these plateaus, they become cold-hearted and, and not devoted to their spouses, families, friends, neighbors, then it's going to shut off wisdom and, and, and intelligence. They, they, they might know a lot of data, but they'll never enjoy the data. Let's put it that way. Christians who love Jesus Christ, they enjoy information. That's what the word blessed means. The word blessed means that you enjoy information. You know how to assimilate it, organize it, embrace it, and, and make it, and, and, and have it to, to bring you that big word, delight. That huge word, delight. I was thinking about adding delight here, but not right now. It's a ginormous word, because it basically means that you have been illuminated and, and you're happy but it's not a Mickey Mouse happy. It, it, it's real deep joy, which is the same word as joy as delight. Those are two big words. I, I thought about adding joy and delight to number four, which is grace, mercy, peace, and rest. But I haven't, I haven't done that yet, which is but joy and delight. Two monstrous words. Also, we don't even have blessed necessarily. Uh, I, I have blessed as 22. But, but that's in the context of you blessing daddy. But I might go ahead and add uh, um, you being blessed and, and giving some terminology for that, okay? But I haven't decided yet. We haven't gotten there yet. But 22 is blessed father. The whole idea of blessing is not, from this ministry, is not for you to be blessed. That is not the number one priority in this ministry. Some of you may say, how dare you say that? Or why not? Or, well, you, you, can, you, you can go somewhere else. It's up to you. I get no money from anybody who watches me in this home-style Bible study here, and, and I don't need any money. I, I seek Bible study and God will take care of me automatically. Automatic, systematic. No, no concerns. No worries. So if prioritizing blessing Father is, is a bother for people or whatever, then th th that's their, that, we call that, that's your business. That, that is your business. You know, that's, Number 22 here, as far as the word bless goes, the, the first idea is bless Father. Not bless me or you. Uh, Daddy comes first here, and that's just the way it goes. And, 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 and we're not throwing ourselves in, in the street. That, that, that's not the point either. I'm not throwing myself in the street at all. I'm just prioritizing. Number 22 is bless Daddy, then bless you.
In other words, when you get up in the morning, how's Father doing today? I was talking with a lady here, she, I was a counseling her, and I told her, I said, ma'am, essentially what you've done is, is you've left Father at the grocery store, and you're cruising along with your cat and your dog, and you're wondering why you're empty. Well, there's no new wine for you, because there's no new wine skins. There has to be a new bottle before we start pouring in this sprinkled, uh, this, this, this joy unspeakable. We can't pour it in you. That's why you can't hold it. You're wondering why you're not happy. It's because you're not taking the steps that please your daddy. You're not pleasing him. That's why you don't have joy unspeakable. You're telling me you're empty. You left daddy at the grocery store and you wonder why things aren't going well for you. You got, you got to go back to the grocery store. That's a metaphor here. It's a parable. And you got to go pick up daddy. You got to put him in the car. You got to prioritize him. It's just that simple. That's why in, in this ministry, we focus on blessed father first. I, I saw a sticker in California one day on, on somebody's, someone's vehicle, and it said, uh, bless the Lord, you know. Uh, I'm not here to necessarily be blessed. I'm here to be blessed, but if, if daddy's not blessed, then I can't be blessed. I, I can't be happy as long as father's not happy. So you're driving along in your car with your cat in the car, your dog, whatever, and your friends, and you're, wee, you know, you're just cruising along, you know, and you're just as happy as can be, you know, and, you know, you're laughing, and, you know, you're having a great time with your sugar water and whatever, and your, you know, and whatever you got, your cookies and your crackers, and you're on vacation, you know, and, uh, I mean, basically life in America, or most people, their life, your life is basically your vacation. That's your, basically your life. Not, not generally your work. I'll be right back. Maranatha. <laughs> 